man himself is here, Oche Ago. Um, greatest Nigerian students, greatest Bogo, greatest Papa. Okay. Um, pardon me, I'm going to be a bit. Uh, um, perhaps I'm going to speak differently from the way perhaps I'm expected to speak. First and foremost, could, could you please turn this a little bit to me? because I want to work with to work with him. All right, so you probably may have heard her when she was introducing me, mention um, fancy titles. Um, executive director this, founder this, CEO this, president this, that this. These are fancy titles. And I believe a lot of people enjoy those fancy titles. Um, but it's not always like that. It hasn't always been like that. I didn't start off being all of these things that was mentioned. And that is the point I want to share with you today. I started off pretty much um, like every other, maybe a child in Nigeria that is born with no spoon at all. You know, some people were born with golden spoon, probably like our professor, uh, uh, our commissioner that just finished speaking, was born with golden spoon. Some people were born with silver spoon in their mouth. Some probably wooden spoon. But people like us, we didn't have any spoon at all in our mouth when we were born. I was born in a hamlet somewhere in Enugu State, Nigeria. What we call hamlet is more like um, farm settlement. Yes, where you will have something like um, um, a clay block. You use it to move a little bit of house. Then you use um, touch, yes, to put on the, the roof. And what I'm saying is, it may look like, yes, that's the normal story that everybody says. That's, that's not a story, that's me. Most of the water we drink is um, a stream where you have to travel like... Um, 400 to 500 meters, uh, sorry, kilometers to come fetch. And when it is dry season, you may have to look deep because the water will round up and you are going to be struggling with a lot of things that have to do with cholera. So let me start my story because I, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. When I was 10 years old, um, I was quite stubborn, yeah, very stubborn. Perhaps I'm, I am still now, but you know, a little bit of my head has calmed down. I was sent to the farm with my two brothers, my immediate elder brother and one of our older brothers. On our way to the farm, I'm, actually I'm the last one of my house, so on our way to the farm, my immediate elder brother was giving a basket to carry. So we got to a point and he stopped and he asked me, why should I be the one carrying this basket when you are my young brother and the last born in the house? So he wanted to force me to carry the basket. And I said, no, uh, you can't intimidate me like that. I, I, won't, I won't accept it. I won't accept you, know, you forcing me to do what I was not supposed to do. So he dropped the basket and both of us left the basket there and we started heading to the farm. We got to where our older brother was waiting for us, and so he, he stopped us and said, asked my immediate elder brother, where is the basket? So my immediate elder brother said, I gave it to him, I refused to carry it. Turning to me, he didn't ask me my own side of the story. The next thing I saw was a huge slap across my face. You know that kind of slap that when you, you, you have heard people say, I, I saw stars in my eyes. Yes, yes, I saw stars. That was the first experience of actually seeing little twinkle of stars when the slap came. So, while I was there crying, my, my, father ran, my father riding his bicycle met us. And for the first time, that person asked me, my father asked me, what was wrong? You know, that kind of cry you already have, and 
you are trying to be a man, you don't want to cry too much, and all of a sudden somebody now asks you, what happened? So, opening my mouth to explain what happened, I started wailing. In fact, it was so bad that my father, who was supposed to travel a town called Bobosi in Anambra State, which is more like a, a developed town at a time, because I was born in a village when there was no, you know, pipe water, no electricity, no access road and all of that. So, taking me to Obosi was like taking me to London of today. And you know what he said? He looked at me and said, Uche, go home and wash your clothes. We are going to Obosi tomorrow. That was how that slap that was supposed to be painful turned to become the liberating slap from my family. Now, let me put the picture clear before I get to where I want to go to. I'm born in a family of five boys, so there were five boys before me. So, I was being used to learn how to beat. So, you know, they say, come here. Anything you do is come here. And so, at some point I was thinking I wasn't even going to grow up, grow to this height because of the amount of knocks and slaps and beats. But, oh well, human beings are not God. So thank God that, you know, was able to add a little bit of height. Please, next slide please. So, what, what am I, next slide. What am I taking away from this story? This little story I shared with you now. You are a summation of your life experiences. You know, they say human beings are made up of 80% nurture and 20% nature. So it's not about where you were born, how you were born, or whatever. It is about how you make use of your life experiences. Us, whatever you are, whatever you're ever going to be, is going to be a summation of your life experiences. Number two, like I said, that unjustifiable slap became a breakthrough slap for me, which means lessons can indeed come from painful experiences. Let me be honest with you. If it was easy for everybody, we will not have one dangote in Nigeria. I hope you know. If it is easy for everybody, we will not have one Mike Adenuga in Nigeria. I hope you know. So, Somebody, the person that spoke before me talked about the road less traveled. And I am one of those people that took the road less traveled. And I'm going to jump you in a bit. Next slide, please. When I got into the university, because of the background where I was coming from, in fact, before I got into the university, I already know it's either I train myself or I will leave the university or I will not even get into it at all. So it was a question of either you survive by yourself in university or you get out of the university. By the way, I read theater arts first degree, I read theater arts, theater and film studies masters, and I'm currently doing it in my PhD. Yes, there is a reason for that. So, when I got into the university, my problem was, the, my biggest problem was the food to eat. You know, you have to feed the tummy first before you can think of all these lofty, great ideas that people share. If you are hungry, you probably may not be able to think right. So, uh, when, I was in the year, when I was in year school in the university, because I actually did some hotel works to get some money to pay for my school fees in year one. So in year two in the university, I, I had to start my first film school, more like a creative college. What do I do? In the morning hours, I come to school like this to learn from my lecturers. And then in the evening hours, I will go to a pri primary school where I have secured a deal with the owners of the primary school that I will, be, I will be using one of their classrooms to teach people who want to learn creative arts. So I learn from my teachers in the morning and I go and teach the same thing in the evening. And they pay me money. That was how I paid first 400,000 Naira to shoot my first film in 2009. Now, a, a lot of people looked at me that time and they were like, what is he even doing? 
What does he think this is how people make it in life? They discarded me. They, give, they didn't give me any chance of becoming anybody. But I know where I was going to and I know what I had in mind. I had my vision crystal clear. Because I read a book in, in my Genesis 3 called Think and Grow Rich. And I read the second book called um, uh, Rich Daddy Poor Daddy. Yes, those two books. So in Genesis 3, one of the things that those two books taught me was to set my goals in long term. So I had written what I was going to do in 15 years, 30 years, 25 years. You know the funny thing? After writing those things and reading through it for a long period of time, I lost that piece of paper. But I didn't know it was somewhere in my bag. 15 years down the line, when I eventually saw that piece of paper, somewhere lying inside one of my old boxes, guess what? Every single thing I envisioned in long term that I was going to do, I was already doing. And that is the power of, that is the power of building um, long visions. Now, fast forward to 2016, I had come out of school, I was a graduate, I was hot because you started doing something in the university, I've made a couple of money, I've, I've written films, I've directed films, I've produced films, I was already hot in the market. So I got a partner who said, you know what, let's start up a business. So he brought in about 40 million naira for capital. And we started off a film production company, more like a media product company in the East then. So for two years, I was supposed to be the managing director. He was supposed to be the CEO. He was supposed to be the sleeping partner. I was supposed to be the active partner. Two years down the line, because, and I want everybody in this room to listen to this. Don't ever go into a business, no matter how you trust a person, without putting down the agreement on paper and signing. Because I wouldn't want you to repeat the same mistake I made. I went into that agreement without signing any papers, without having any written document. All I did was agree, have a handshake, gentleman, and I passed. Two years later, in, my partner started seeing me as a staff rather than a partner. So I was no longer a partner. So when I walk into the office, I'm a partner, he's a partner. I was not employed. We started this. 2016, I lost that partnership. I woke up, I came to my office, my office was already locked, keys changed, I lost the partnership. Um, unfortunately for me, I didn't have financial intelligence at the time. I was a hot boy, I was spending money, people were living in my flat, we were enjoying life. I never ever saved or made conscious financial decisions. So when I lost that partnership, my, the two cars I was driving at the time were taken away from me. Even my laptop was taken away from me, all in the name that it is an official car. So I sat down. First of all, I bought a bottle of wine. Everybody in my family knows that, that anytime I lose something very big to me, I usually will celebrate it. People usually will begin to cry or wail, but I usually will celebrate it. You know why? I believe in the in the um, principle of the catapult. You know catapult? When you draw a catapult backwards, the further it goes backwards, the longer the stone is going to launch and the further that stone is going to travel. So when I lose something very important to me, instead of dwelling on it, I usually will celebrate it. So when I lost that partnership in 2016, I bought a bottle of red wine, went home to my fiance then with some of my friends. I sat down, I said, let's celebrate. They said, they didn't understand why. I said, because for me, I had only 10,000 naira left in my account as of 2016 March. I can tell you for free. It was that same 10,000 naira that I used to register a business name that will, that you, he mentioned, she mentioned today as the founder of OK Media. I recently as a business name, you know, after that, I sat down to ask myself, what do I have that I can sell? What, that's the first question, what do I have that I can sell? Who can I sell it to and where can I find them? 
One of the things I can do, because I started early in life, is that I can stand here and teach film, creative arts, theater arts, creative writing, anything that has to do with the creative industry. I can teach it for a whole day without looking at pain or without looking at any book. So I know I have the content to sell. So I, I advertised my very first Facebook class. I said, I advertised my very first class which is now what we know today as OK Media College. And I had over 30 people sign up for a 10,000 Naira class. Do the math. I didn't have to use one Naira to advertise. It was all on my Facebook page. So that was how we started. I started doing, repeating and repeating and repeating until we grew up to now have about eight permanent staff and hundreds and hundreds of people we work with on different locations. Fast forward, or, so before I go to this enablers, please leave it there, leave it there. But before I go to this enablers, which I'm going to run through, I also want to share with you about Coast Film Festival. When I got the idea of Coast Film Festival, by this time, that is talking about 2019 now, I was rich in assets, but no longer rich in physical cash. Okay, let me quickly explain it. When you begin to get rich in assets, your physical cash will begin to reduce. This is why you say Dangote is the richest man in Nigeria. But you may go to him today and say, give me one billion cash. He, will not have, he may not have it. The reason is because cash in assets is way, way, way better than cash in physical liquidation. When you have money in the bank, you have no money because it's not adding anything to it. So in 2019 now, I already had something in asset, but in physical cash, I didn't have. And I had a vision of starting a film festival in Southeast, because there was none. And like some of the previous speakers had already said, I'm always looking for solutions. Because yes, apart from Bangladesh and some other war-torn zones in the world, Nigeria is the next best place to make money. You know why? We have too much trouble, like somebody said, Yet, we still have peace of mind to go and think about the solution. So, when you come around where people are quarreling and fighting, don't join it. Pay attention to what is causing the fight. That is the millions you are looking for. Because the moment you find a solution to that, you will start making it. So let me share some of my enablers. Some of the enablers I use in life to navigate life that has helped me. Number one is, Life is in phases and men are in sizes. Bishop Oyedepo will always say that. But guess what? The biggest problem Nigeria has today is not even about most of the things I've already been saying. It's because in our 20s, we want to live the life of 50s. So some of the things that people took time to build over the years. I have been in the film industry for almost 18, 19 years now. Somebody will come in yesterday and want to, you know, over, bypass the process and get to the result. It's not always like that. So stop trying to live your 80s, 50s, and your 20s. Because what you are trying to do is to destroy the process. The second one is, happiness depends on money. You may never have money. Yes, I'm going to be speaking about it. You may never have, have so if your happiness depends on money, you may never be happy in life. You know why? Because money keeps with numbers and numbers never get to finish. The next one is, if you cannot see the bright side of life, and this is the favorite one. If you cannot see the bright side of life, polish the dull side. There is always something positive about every bad situation. When I got a slap, there was a trouble that changed my life. When I lost my partnership, there was a business that changed my, my finances. Every single place you get to in life that you think that this is the worst situation, the worst situation you think you have found yourself, forget it, somebody else has seen himself or herself there and has gotten through it. The last one there is not to start until you start. And I'm going to say this now because time is of no of essence. Let me round up by saying this. What is that particular thing that you feel so hungry for, but you have not started because you are afraid? Let me give you a typical example of what my pastor, Pastor Paul Adiferasi, defines excuses as. He says that excuses are monuments of nothingness. 
They are tools in the hands of the competent, and those who use them are not wise. Stop giving excuses why you are not making efforts, you are not trying, you are not building, you are not starting something. Start immediately. Thank you very much.